Barbara McClintock discovered transposition in the 1940s and 1950s. She won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1983 for her discovery. She was one of the first people to research gene expression. She discovered transposable elements in maize while she was studying the dissociation locus. She later found this dissociation locus could change position, resulting in a variety of pigmentation in the kernels. Transposons are sometimes called jumping genes because a segment of DNA is cut and moves to another segment. When I think of jumping genes, this is more what goes through my head. I picture a little DNA man who just jumps out of the DNA and then lands in his new segment. What is actually going on is more along the lines of this. This represents your double-stranded DNA. In the center is the transposon and on either end are inverted repeats. Transposase proteins come in and bind to the inverted sequences. The enzymes bring the DNA ends together and the ends are cleaved from the original DNA. Let's zoom in a bit. Each 3' hydroxyl group attacks the other strand of the double helix to form the hairpin intermediate. The 3' hydroxyl groups then attack the target DNA to form NICs. DNA polymerase synthesizes across the gaps and DNA's ligase seals them. Each transposon encodes for its own transposase. This means there are many different transposases. We are going to look at one of the most well understood ones, TN5 transposase. TN5 is a bacterial transposase and it is well known for containing regions for canamycin and streptomycin resistance. The active site of TN5 contains two metal ions believed to be magnesium and manganese. Shown is one unit of the TN5 transposase with DNA interaction. Transposases are typically found in a larger protein complex called a transpososome, shown in the bottom right-hand corner. The transpososome plays a role in the architectural structure of the transposase and DNA to regulate interaction. Here you can see the neighboring residues of the manganese and magnesium ions. The manganese ion on the left is associated with aspartate and glutamate residues, and in purple is a nucleotide of DNA. The manganese ion is located in the active site, and the three acidic residues make up the catalytic triad. The magnesium ion on the right corresponds with two glutamate ions. One active site can be used to carry out both DNA cleavage and joining reactions because of the common chemical mechanism used. These acidic residues are required for divalent metal ion binding. The metal ions are required for the phosphoryl transfer reaction and play a role in substrate binding. They are used also to form contacts between protein and nucleic acid. The three residues found surrounding the magnesium ion are called the DDE motif. The DDE motif is the active site that is found in many transposases. Transposases remain incredibly inactive. To activate, the residues in the DDE motif are mutated to catalyze the movement of the transposon. In the mutation, the aspartates are mutated to glutamates and the glutamates are mutated to aspartates. Next, we are going to go through the three steps in the DNA cleavage reaction. The first step occurs in a concerted SN2 mechanism where water is the nucleophile. One metal ion activates the water molecule and the water then attacks the 3' phosphate and breaks the bond between the phosphate and the oxygen. The oxygen acts as a leaving group. The donor DNA leaves the active site and the negative 3' oxygen coordinates with the other metal ion to stabilize the charge. In the second step, the 3' oxygen of the transferred strand attacks the 5' phosphate of the non-transferred strand. This results in the hairpin intermediate. An oxygen from the phosphate moves into the active site and corresponds with the metal. The inverted repeats on either end of the transposon allow for this complementary base pairing of the hairpin structure. The hairpin intermediate releases this segment of DNA from the donor DNA. The final step is a resolution of the hairpin. Another activated water molecule attacks the phosphate and cleaves the bond with the 3' oxygen. Strand transfer occurs by a transesterification reaction. So now that we know what happens, why do we care? Many transposons encode genes for antibiotic resistance. In DNA, transposons can be moved from a bacterial chromosome to a plasmid and in this way can express the antibiotic resistance gene. The mechanisms generally do not require DNA homology between the element and sites of insertion. A plasmid is capable of transferring information to another cell through bacterial conjugation. 
This is how antibiotic resistance can spread very rapidly. The role of transposases, although simple, is extremely important and not entirely understood. The potential of manipulating transposases is huge and could potentially be used for gene therapies to treat disease. 